progressives who should have used birth control and gentlemen. Uh, the topic of this video will be, if you, you've probably heard a lot about this, how Chicago is broke, and we're going to break this down. I've got a much longer article, which covers more of this, a little bit more in detail. I'm going to skip to the uh, high points on this, but uh, I've seen some progressive water carriers, you know, insinuating that Chicago is not broke and Chicago is doing well when it is not. Uh, the impetus for this video... There was a, a janitor from Chicago named McStupid who was claiming that Chicago was the greatest city in the U.S. <laughs> and that's pretty laughable. But uh, then again, this janitor, well, she that's why she was a janitor. Uh, she's not too smart. But uh, <clears throat> another impetus for this was uh, Senator Dick Durbin had a laundry list of goodies he wants for the city of Chicago. And if you live in Minnesota or the Dakotas, you'll pay for it because the children or something. Durbin has a list of goodies to make it all better. By golly, just a bit more money and the drug addicts will become brain surgeons. The baby mamas will get degrees in interior design. And the gangbangers will erect grocery stores to serve the community. Just a few more million folks. And again, all the, the only link you'll need will be in the video description. Unlike a lot of people on YouTube, I actually have sources and details. And it's not cut and paste. I will now endeavor to elucidate some information on Chicago. I already have a treasure trove of info on Illinois spending. Again, see the link under the video. But I'll wager Durbin has no idea how much being, is being spent there. And he really doesn't care. States already heavily rely on federal aid and the strings attached. If you've been paying attention, you already know this. Durbin, uh, Senator Dick Turbin, or Durbin has some generalized rag we've been hearing for decades, along with some feeble appeals to close our gun laws. Because if they close their gun laws, Chicago will become uh, a place everybody wants to live and, and crime will uh, crater and uh, it will be basically economic nirvana. No specifics from dirt, dirt Bin, but there are some gaps in there somewhere. Isn't the state of Illinois, Cook County, and the city of Chicago responsible for law enforcement personnel and spending in Chicago before Washington is? Is there anything Washington isn't responsible for, Mr. Durbin, or should we just dissolve all government below Leviathan? Chicago is a dying city. Its population in 2010 was 25.5% smaller than in 1950, 24% smaller than in 1960. No amount of federal money will reverse the processes of progressive politics, a massive welfare state, and a centrally planned economy. I blame we the people. We are selfish and jealous though of those who are successful, like McStupid is jealous of me. Those who plan their lives. Those who finished school, didn't get worthless degrees, and didn't have a gaggle of children who have no father and they cannot care for. That said, let's get down to brass tacks and see if Chicago's numerous problems are because they aren't spending enough money. Chicago employee pension, 1982 through 85 average, 8.69% of all Chicago city spending. Chicago debt retirement and interest payments, 1982 through 1985 average, 9.2725 percent of all spending. 1982 through 85 per capita average spending, 650 dollars and 50 cents. Again, 1982 through 85. Chicago pension funds, 1990 through 1993 average, 8.0925 percent of all Chicago city spending. Chicago debt service. 1990 through 1993 average, 19.875 percent of all spending. 1990 through 1993 per capita average, 1,140 dollars and 75 cents, a 75.3 percent increase from the 1982-85 average to the 1990-1993 average. Is Chicago spending enough? Again, a 75.3 percent increase from the 1982-85 average to the 90-93 average. Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs plus 
Mayor's Office of Special Events from 1990 to 93, they spent $65,173,227. How many potholes would that have fixed? How many police officers could that have hired? But, you know, you got to push diversity and cult cultural diversity and all this nonsense that uh, should be somebody else's domain. $65 million. How many police officers would that have hired? How many snowplow drivers? How many potholes could that have filled? Etc. How many condoms would it have bought for the idiots? Just imagine all the condoms they could have bought for $65 million and prevented idiots from reproducing. <clears throat> Chicago pension funds, 2000 through 2003, averaged 7.6225 percent of all Chicago city spending. Chicago debt service, 2000 through 2003, averaged 18.1175 percent of all spending. Per capita spending, 2000 through 2003, $1,573.50. Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs plus Mayor's Office of Special Events, 2000 through 2003 total. $117,950,788. How many potholes would that have filled? How many police officers could have been hired? How many fire department personnel could have been fired, hired? How many useless people could be fired? How many useless teachers in Chicago could have been fired? How many good teachers could have been hired? Chicago pension funds, 2014 through 2017 average, Basically, 10% of all Chicago city spending. Chicago debt service. Here's where it gets bad. 2014 through 2017 average, 24.3075% of all spending. Chicago's debt service. Chickens are coming home to roost. Chicago is now spending well over one-third of every dollar on debt service and pensions. For you progressives listening, that's 30, more than 33 cents of every dollar. Per capita spending, 2014 to 2017, $2,802.50. These are all nominal dollars, of course. Per capita spending was 78.1% higher in the 2014-2017 frame time frame than the 2000-2003 time frame. Again, 78.1% higher. Per capita spending was 433%, 431% higher in the 2014-2017 time frame than the 1982-85 time frame. <laughs> Both examples took the rate of inflation and beat it into oblivion. Do you get that? 433% higher. 31%. Excuse me, I keep on, I keep messing that up. Total spending for Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events 2014 through 2017. $122,936,085. Apparently they've ratcheted down that spending a bit, but probably because they have so much going to debt service and pensions. So is Chicago spending enough? If they spent $100 million more on cultural diversity, would that work? Do you think if they spent hundred, took all that spending away from those useless departments and spent it on police, do you think it would make it any better? If Washington tripled the amount of they were sending to Chicago for food stamps, do you think it would get better? Does Chicago's culture need a change? Should successful black, white, and Hispanic people who actually pay taxes in other states have their money confiscated when they could use it for something better and sent to Chicago? 20,000 inner city sweat hogs. Or should Cook County be responsible for Chicago? Or Chicago be responsible for Chicago? I know progressives want to nationalize basically everything. Is there anything Washington should not be responsible for? We've come a long way since uh, James Madison vetoed that bonus bill. And uh, back then the federal government was largely constrained to the Constitution. And now the federal government is virtually involved in everything. And yet Chicago is still a city that's dying. Let's take a look at Cleveland. The city of Chicago is becoming and will be in 20 years. Mark my words. Those of you listening to this, if you're still here in 20 years, and I know I will be, unless Jesus comes back, in 20 years, Chicago will be what Cleveland is today. Maybe a slightly larger population. Cleveland has seen a mass exodus of whites since 1950. 
and a massive increase in single parent families. Let me show you my shocked face now. Cleveland's population was 56% smaller in 2010 than it was in 1950 and 54% smaller than it was in 1960. Cleveland is dying a slow, agonizing death. More food stamps, more public housing, more infrastructure investments, and more city planning. Many of Cleveland's top employers are either government entities or nonprofits. Woohoo! More city planning will not solve a problem that has been festering for 60 years. When people leave because the business and cultural environment are unhospitable, they take their families and wads of cash elsewhere. A city in this condition usually ends up like Detroit. Dilapidated, abandoned structures everywhere because everybody took their money and their families and went somewhere else. And I don't blame them. I would leave Cleveland too. In the mayor's annual report for 2010, the city had demolished 1,130 structures in 2010, bringing the total raised since 2006 to 5,152 demolitions, expended almost $5 million in federally granted, federally granted neighborhood stabilization program funds to demolish condemned unsafe structures because the people left. I'm sure taxpayers in Idaho and Iowa appreciate the assistance they gave Cleveland to demolish thousands of structures because the government and some of the insane residents there ran every taxpayer out of town. As Walter E. Williams has often said, a dangerous place to go is also likely a dangerous place to send your money. That's why Cleveland's population has declined by more than one half million in the last 70 years. Cleveland is a petri dish for progressive politics. More than 2,600 demolitions were done by private entities during the same time frame. It's obvious the city of Cleveland is dying it is an organism in its death throes and federal aid alongside expansions of local government by do-gooders is only slightly postponing the inevitable. From 2011 to 2014, 2,723 more structures were demolished. Looks like it's morning in Cleveland. Prosperity is just around the corner, eh? This is the primrose path Chicago is on as well. Mayor Jackson Wasted a lot of ink in his annual reports, blaming the 2008 Great Recession, which has become the new norm, along with trillion-dollar deficits. He blamed the 2008 Great Recession for Cleveland's problems. But the city has been a, in a slide since the 50s. Who is he trying to fool? Well, obviously, he fools the idiots in Cleveland. But then again, I, have, I, I imagine that there's not a whole lot of intelligent people left in Cleveland. Debt service expenditures as a percentage of all general fund spending 2009 through 2012, 12.54%. Cleveland's didn't have reliable figures that went back nearly as far as Chicago. Debt service expenditures as a percentage of all general fund spending 2014 through 2017, 14.4425%. General fund expenditures per capita average 20. 2008 through 2013, $1,248. General fund expenditures per capita average, again, nominal dollars, 2014 through 2017, $1,417. A 13.5% increase between two time, those two time frames. So they're not jacking up spending as much as Chicago. Total preliminary appropriations for 2011. This is you know, you got the difference between general fund and total appropriations. It's like a lot of times people focus on the general fund. And like, well, all this other stuff the city runs, I guess that doesn't count. Well, I think it does. Total preliminary appropriations for 2011. $1,289,296,972 per capita spending 3283 Total appropriations 2012. 1,296,472,607 per capita spending 3,316 total appropriations 2013 1,469,741,143 per capita spending 3,767 you can see it's going up quite a bit total appropriations 2016 1,580,072,291 per capita spending $4,095. Total appropriations 2016. 
24.7% increase from 2011 to 2016. No lack of spending there when you consider total appropriations. Cleveland's population has been steadily declining for 60 years, but their per capita spending is not. And then I have uh, total appropriations for 2018 and 2019, but I don't have reliable population estimates yet. But in 2018, $1,768,000,000. Total appropriations 2019, $1,825,000,000. Here's another tidbit concerning city staff in Cleveland. Staffing summary for 2018 lists 4,459 employees categorized under general fund. 2017, it was 4,420. In 2016, it was 4,327. In 2015, it was 4,387. In 2014, it was 4,477. The population continues to decline, but city union goons don't. As an aside, I know it's Cleveland. Try to make it illegal for a city employee to live outside Cleveland because people say, hey, I'm going to go work for Cleveland and get a taxpayer-funded pension and then leave Cleveland. And they tried to make that illegal, <laughs> but they got beat in court. So now, <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> oh, everybody, they're going to they're gonna want to get some lavish benefits working as a city goon. But then they're not going to live there. And I don't blame them. <laughs> oh, and briefly, St. Louis. St. Louis is in sad shape. St. Louis's metro area is probably the, one of the, the, might be the most dangerous of any metro area in the U.S., it's sad. St. Louis is another city that is dying. How many large U.S. cities do we have that have been dying due to progressivism and the welfare state? OBJ's war on poverty. Well, the war on poverty was also a war on the taxpayer, and it made taxpayers leave a lot of states. Leave a lot of cities, rather. And now St. Louis. St. Louis City General Fund Expenditures... 2002 through 2005 per capita 1,190 debt service expenditures as a percentage of all general fund spending 2002 through 2005 6.415 percent government wide expenses note I am assuming this is the whole nine yards later it's called a citywide summary or total primary government government wide expenses per capita 2002 through 2005 average 2,493 dollars St. Louis City general fund expenditures per capita, 2010 through 2013, $1,401.25. St. Louis City debt service expenditures as a percentage of general fund spending, 2010 through 2013, 5.7325%. So they appear, so far it appears they're not quite nearly in as bad a shape as Chicago. St. Louis City total primary government per capita spending 2010 through 2013, $3,168. St. Louis City general fund expenditures per capita average 2014 through 2017, $1,529. St. Louis City debt service expenditures average 2014 through 2017 as a percentage of all general fund spending, 5.59%. St. Louis City total primary government average spending per capita 2014 through 2017, $3,489. St. Louis isn't going as hog wild as Chicago or, or Cleveland, but the city is in sad shape. Their homicide problem, <clears throat> excuse me, is so bad it makes Chicago and Cleveland look safe. That's another facet of these three cities. They all have huge homicide problems, especially St. Louis and Chicago. So that closes it. Um, again, Unlike a lot of people on YouTube, I have actual sources, actual references, and broke this down. You can see how <clears throat> you're going to see Paul, how these cities are not really cutting back their spending. They're continuing to bury themselves in debt, and you're going to see more calls from people like Dick Durbin for taxpayers in 49 other states to bail out Chicago. It shouldn't happen. Vote Liberty. Vote Libertarian.